welcome to another construction video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 25 which is called Up Up and Away and I'm actually going to do two construction videos for this. This is the first one which is showing how to make the actual hot air balloon version of the die set which is why it's called Up Up and Away but in the die set you also get the ability to make um, to kind of make the balloon upside down and put a different lid on top of it to turn it into a decanter and so there will be a separate construction video to show you how to make that one as well although um, before you've watched this video you've probably already watched my up close video where I will have shown you um, everything that I have created as well so you'll be able to see this one that I'm making now will have already been in the other video as well but for this one instead of making it as a gift box I'm just going to make it as kind of like a decor item and make it so that the basket is hanging below it rather than it standing on its basket and you taking the top off to be a lid I'm going to make the whole top portion um, one solid piece and then the basket is going to hang below it and I was thinking um, this could be uh, obviously a lovely like home decor kind of item that could just hang somewhere but you could also um, put a small pack of uh, fairy lights inside it and I reckon the basket is possibly big enough I mean maybe not a battery pack that has double A batteries in but maybe one of the the small little battery packs that has like the little button cell batteries in um, you could hide that in the basket and then have all of the um, fairy lights in the actual top part of the balloon so you could actually make that to your advantage and do something with vellum or something in the top of the balloon but for this one um, both of the balloons that I have made are exactly the same colourways, which is how I've managed to already, um, you know, put gems and stuff on because I know where I want them to go because I've already made this one in the other version of having the base attached to it. Um, but I've gone for a rainbow hot air balloon. I know it's not exactly accurate to like what an actual hot air balloon would look like when it's in rainbow form because... Um, there's so many more different panels in a in a real hot air balloon so you wouldn't just have solid blocks like this they'd be m more broken up but for this one I decided to go for um obviously there's seven colors in the rainbow but I wanted the rainbow to loop round obviously the red is going to touch the last color so I wanted the um the first and last colour of the rainbow to blend together nicely so I've kind of missed out orange and then changed it from being an indigo to a pink so that the pink will blend into the red nicely so that when it goes round in a circle it's all going to flow nicely. Um, and the one that I will have showed you in the up close video I used the magnetic closure that the instructions will tell you how to do you just put a couple of magnets inside the base of it and inside the top of it and then you have like a magnetic lid to it you can actually twist it if you wanted to and not have pink lining up with pink you know you could twist it offset a little bit and have um, maybe the colours going round in a slight diagonal as well but for this one I think I'm going to stick it so it's like blue on blue red on red yellow on yellow you know all the way around but we'll have a look at that when we get to it so to make one of these hot air balloons it is a hexagonal kind of box so you that obviously indicates you're going to need six sides so you're going to need six of these panels and because I'm doing them rainbow I've got one of each color but you could definitely do it like a tri-colored one and have you know uh, three colors and then repeat the three colors as well and do it that way too but you want to have six of this portion here which actually they go up this way and this becomes the top of the hot air balloon which you will secure in place with a hexagon and I have actually cut two hexagons I'm going to have the red one on the outside and I'm going to stick the pink one on the inside to make it a nice strong kind of bond at the top and then you want your six colours again in this piece which is the bottom curvature of the balloon and this would be where the actual basket sticks to the balloon but we're going to do something a little bit different and punch a couple of holes in some of these and attach the basket with some twine hanging down so that, that is like the actual balloon portion you're going to need all those pieces to make that and then for the basket again it's hexagonal so you're going to need one of the bases I think I am going to put a second base inside it I think I did do that for the other one that I did as well I did it quite a while ago so I can't 100% remember but we can cut off the glue tabs and just stick the other one on the inside I usually only do that when um, the tabs are on the sides and not the bottom because then you're kind of hiding the glue tabs and sandwiching them between something so it's not 100% um, necessary because the glue tabs are actually going to be on the sides of the little basket but then you're going to need six of your little side panels for your basket as well and 
and in my up close video I explained exactly how I got the stamping on all of these panels. I made like a little template and recessed each one back in so the stamping would be in exactly the same place on all of the six panels as well. So firstly let's make the basket first so that we've got something um, built really quickly. So we've got our six panels here and let me zoom in a little bit more and we've got our base piece here. So you can do this um, two different ways. You could stick all of these together. You can see where I've put all of the red liner tape. You could go with these tabs first and stick all of these together so you end up with a, a kind of ring of these six sides and then try and put the base in. But actually for these kind of ones, especially when they have um, the, ta the glue tabs on the base rather than on coming off the bottom of the side panel, it's actually easier to stick them onto the base first. So we're going to remove all of these little bits of glue or um, red liner tape off of here. Um, you can definitely use glue as well if you wanted to and I have used three millimeter red liner tape on all of these ones here. You could probably get away with six on these side panels but because I had the three millimeter out I just went with the three millimeter on all of the, the glue tabs. So we can just go around, take our panels, we're lining that bottom edge up with the, the score line on here and it doesn't matter that I haven't um, pre-folded these because we can do that once all of these panels are stuck onto here as well. So you just want to go all the way around, lining up those bottom edges with the cut line of the panel. And depending on uh, what you want your basket to look like, what kind of gift you're going to put in there, whether you're going to do the basket hanging below from strings or whether you're going to do it as this is like the base of the box um, and then your gift would actually sit in this and part in the balloon and then you take the top of the balloon off. It kind of depends how you might want to uh, decorate the interior of this as well. Because this basket is going to hang down, we could, if we wanted to, cut some more of these panels and stick them here to hide those glue tabs because we're probably going to be able to see inside the basket. Whereas if you're going to stick the basket to the bottom half of the balloon, um, you're definitely not going to see inside the basket so you wouldn't have to worry about uh, decorating anything in here but it's totally up to you as you're making it and you don't have to decide that kind of thing straight away you can obviously wait until you've kind of put it together and think oh maybe I do want to hide some of this inside but if you're going to hide the battery pack in there you could easily put like um, a ball of scrunched up tissue paper or something inside there to disguise the battery pack if you were going to put um, little fairy lights in it. So now we're just going round and pre-folding all of the score lines. So we've got these long ones along these edges here and then we've also got the ones that go up the diagonal edge and then for that last tiny little bit as well. So we can go and pre-fold all of them so everything's all ready for us. And then that will be all of our glue tabs pre-folded. But we have a couple of other bits we need to pre-fold as well. And that is this little line here, which is going to go away from us. Because the basket is going to kind of uh, slope upwards like that. And the, the reason why they've done that is because... Um, you've got to make the basket then smaller to attach to the bottom of the hot air balloon but we could actually if we wanted to not even bother with those upper pieces we could stick this together and fold those upper pieces on the inside to make it a larger basket but but actually because we are going to attach it to the balloon and we kind of want the strings to hang vertically down we are going to go with that sloping side to the actual hot air balloon and we've also got a little tab here that we want to bend towards us so we're now going to get this kind of a shape so we're going away and then sort of up or back towards us to get that one pre-folded as well Then I find it much easier to take the, the glue tabs off of all of these before I start sticking it together but you can definitely go around one at a time if you find that easier or you can definitely use your uh, wet glue as well if you'd rather rather than using um, red tape. Usually when I'm making these I would put a little bit of glue on here as well but just for the video and constructing it it's going to be a bit quicker if I just um, 
and put the tape on like that so we can see how this all sort of comes together and because I used that uh, template to stamp all of these panels on here they're all going to line up perfectly around here which is nice but if you um, don't want to go to the effort of the template although I do think the template is actually easier than not using a template but if you didn't want to go to the effort and um, they were a little bit off or wonky you could wrap a ribbon around there you could um, do one strand of twine going around it as well there's loads of ways to disguise if your stamping doesn't quite match up when you do something like this as well so we have got all of that together now we can decide do we want to put an extra bottom in the box and to be honest when that comes together we're not going to make the strings excessively long we're only going to do them like this long so to be honest I don't think we need to bother with that second base on the inside of here because we're really not going to see inside the box very much so I think I'm going to um, ignore that so now we need to go around and remove the tape for the next bits as well so we want to go up these diagonal slopes and remove the tape off of all of those pieces. And then we just want to tuck it under and line up the score line and the cut line together. And you can see the shape of the box coming together then. One more. Okay, and then we've got that last tab as well, the little tiny tabs that are on here. One of them, the backing already came off, so I can stick that on. I think I did actually just use wet glue the first time um, I made this, but I've already stuck the tape on, so we will go with the red liner tape. Just got to pick off those tiny little bits of backing. It's always tricky. I'm sure it's the tiny bits of the, the red liner tape backing that are the hardest ones to get off. Okay, so then we just got to go round and um, squish all of those together to stick them and you if you're using wet glue I highly recommend getting hold of some of those tiny little wooden pegs because you can just um, peg the top of them to keep it all together I've got mine here actually these tiny little wooden pegs they're fantastic for um, keeping any little glue tabs together if you're waiting for things to dry I have used tape in this instance, but, but if I was using glue, I would definitely use all my little pegs to hold this together. So we've now got our basket, which we're going to come back to later, because I need to decide how many strings I want to add. I could just do opposites, or because this is six-sided, I could do three of them and have the basket hanging down by three threads. But thinking about if you wanted to put anything in this bottom basket, you might want to go with the two... Um, you know two anchor points rather than three so it's easier to get something inside but once we have made the actual balloon we'll decide on how we're going to attach that basket and I will also show you exactly where you would um, stick the balloon onto this to make it be the actual gift box as well. So for the balloon part of our box we want to make sure all of our panels are in our correct colour order that we want to stick them together in just to make sure they're going to be the right way round and actually we also because this is going to be up the other way we want to make sure we stick these together this way because that is actually going to be the top and then we want to make sure that the bottom of the box then sticks together in the same order as well if we want to match them up if we don't want to match them up it doesn't really matter like if you just wanted the rainbow order but you weren't too fussed about um, if the colors match top and bottom um, it wouldn't particularly matter but if you stick these together when they were up the other way they would go in the opposite order if that makes sense they would go like anti-clockwise rather than clockwise in their rainbow order or whatever but um to make sure it's going to be right we want these to be up the correct way that they're going to go so uh, which bit shall we stick together first 
let's go with the top first it's probably easier to do the top actually because um, we're going to stick all of the pieces around the um, hexagon first so we can get that colour order correct going around the hexagon so for adhesive wise you can see there are lots of glue tabs on these and I think the first ones I think I did um, cut little pieces of tape and put them all on these which it wasn't as time consuming as I thought it would be what I do is I take off a length of tape um, and hold it in my hand and then cut uh, little pieces and stick them on the tabs but for this one I thought because this is just going to be um, a decorative ornament rather than an actual gift box I have just put long bits of tape on the inside here and then we will stick the tabs um, you know, from the other one onto this piece of tape you can definitely then take some anti-static powder and rub it across the rest of the adhesive if you want to but because this is just going to be decorative it doesn't really matter that there's exposed sticky on the inside but if you were going to put a gift in there you might want to make sure you've um, either got rid of the sticky or that you have um, put like tissue paper or something on the inside first so that your gift doesn't get stuck to any adhesive that's left but um, for this one we're not going to worry about that because it's just going to be a decorative one So you want to take the, uh, yeah, I've covered one of these, which is going to be the outside one, the red one, in um, adhesive, so that I didn't have to worry about putting little bits of adhesive on all of these little glue tabs um, that attach the hexagon to the actual side panels. And then the pink one uh, is my spare hexagon. We will just stick that um, on the inside afterwards with some glue. So I want to go around in this order and I'm going to take the hexagon and stick that, lining it up with the cut line to the score line of the red one. And we can actually, once we've stuck it on, fold that. We can, well, we could pre-fold them first if you want to. Pre-fold all those top tabs, making sure to keep your panels um, in the correct colour order. Although if you did mess up at this stage and went anti-clockwise rather than clockwise or, you know, whichever way, um, you could just change the order for the bottom as well. But just make sure you, you know, once you've decided which way around you're going to go with your colour order, you just got to make sure the other one follows that as well. So now we can stick the next one next to it. And then the green one next to the yellow one. And then the blue one. And these are all textured Craft Perfect cardstocks as well. I think they are Chili, Marigold, Grass Green, uh, Cornflower. Then I think this one is Amethyst and that one's Fuchsia, I think, if you did want to know the colours. And then we've got our purple and then finally you can see why I chose the pink because purple goes to pink really nicely and pink goes to red really nicely as well. And we can just slide that last glue tab up and under. And stick that into place and we can flip that over. And we can take our spare hexagon, doesn't matter what colour this one is, I had just cut a pink one, so that's the one I've decided to use. And then we can place that right in the centre to really hold all of those glue tabs together. I think in this instance it's a good idea, because the glue tabs were on these side panels, it's a good idea to sandwich these between, because these are going to be curved, so you never know how much like pressure is on the um, the glue tabs that are holding it to that top hexagon so if you've put um, another die cut on the other side of them they're being held both sides so hopefully they're more likely to sort of stay over a long period of time and not like pop apart or anything so that is the first stage to the top of the actual um, hot air balloon and you will get instructions in with this die set as well but I know a lot of you like to actually watch um, a construction rather than following instructions so now you want to kind of curve these a little bit using the texture craft perfect it's a really nice weight of card and I have actually stuck the intricate ones onto there as well and it um, 
just adding colour onto colour or you know putting a patterned paper onto the main panel or something rather than um, for example like cutting the detail out of mirror card and then sticking it to um, the pearlescent card and then sticking it onto here that would make it quite thick you probably still you probably could still put it all together but um, it's easier to get that nice curvature of cardstock if you're using slightly thinner card or just um, a slightly thinner card with a patterned paper panel on there as well but just have a play with what kind of card that you reckon you can um, get a nice curvature onto for when you're putting this together and we also want to go round and pre-fold all of those little glue tabs you could have done that before um, when we were pre-folding those other ones as well but either way on this one it doesn't particularly matter you just want to go round and fold them I think this is actually going to be way easier than the first one I put together. I'm sure I did put the um, tape just on the tiny glue tabs on the first one that I did. But this is going to be so much easier just having the tape um, already underneath the previous one. So now we can literally just flip this over, pick a starting point, take that tape off and then you're kind of... I'm trying to hold two together and you're kind of like curving them as you go and then pushing from underneath so I'm pushing with this finger to push that glue tab down and you'll kind of get that first one in place and then you're sort of curving the card a little bit to make it follow the curvature of the other one and then you're just pressing from the inside to push that glue tab onto the adhesive that's in there. And we can just pull that round and you've got your little join there and this is the point where you could take your um, anti-static powder and run it along there if you're worried about any of that exposed adhesive then we can move on to the next one and we're just doing exactly the same thing pressing from the inside to get that to stick really nicely and just following the curvature down and if you're worried about like these last ones popping open you can definitely get a little peg and peg them as well to make sure they're going to stay stuck um, and if you can definitely use wet glue to do this as well if you'd rather to oh, I didn't take the backing off okay now we've got to take the backing off the next one no wonder it wasn't sticking and we can move around to this join See, it's not too tricky to do. You're literally just following along. And this is so much easier, actually, just putting that tape along the inside there. And then we can remove the next bit of tape. And then we've got the final two. I'm just going to remove the tape on both of these at the same time. I think it's just going to be a smidgen easier. Okay. And then we want to start down here again. Okay. And then the final side... And then you're basically left with a lovely little bowl kind of shape. It kind of actually does remind me of, you know, when you would do like um, paper mache on the top of a balloon and then you'd like have this kind of a shape and you'd make a bowl out of it. It, it really does look like the top of a balloon, which is obviously what it's meant to be. But it's, it's quite funny that it reminds me of um, something that you would have made on the top of a balloon and it is supposed to be the top of a balloon. So... That is the top piece, um, and you can definitely put your anti-static powder on there if you want to. So we've got that piece. Now, we want to start sticking the bottom of the box together. I think I do want to add a little bit more tape on some of these though, so I'll show you how I tend to stick tape on little glue tabs like this. 
So on the back of here I have done the long piece again, exactly like we just did for the top, but I just realised I'm going to want tape on these as well. So what I do is I take a long piece off and I hold it in my hand and then I just place it down onto the glue tab and then snip off where I want it. To hold it all together like that. So that you've just got small pieces on those little tabs um, and you don't have to faff with cutting tiny little bits just straight off the roll. It's much easier to have a little piece in your hand. So uh, we've got all of those pieces in the correct order and we want to um, lightly shape them again and then folding wise I, um, I don't think this one specifically needs to be folded but we'll fold it inwards because it mostly just goes straight up this this is actually going to be the kind of top of the actual box and then this is the lid but for the one that I'm going to do I will show you how that would work but for the one I'm going to do is I'm going to actually adhere this onto here so that the the whole top of the balloon is the actual um you know one whole piece rather than it being a lid and a bottom piece and then we just want to go around and pre-fold all of these again so everything's ready and then this one we actually want to fold towards us so that one we're folding away and this one we're folding towards so they're not going to be at that quite a dramatic angle but that's how we're pre-folding them and that glue tab is going away from us as well and so are all these ones You can see how simple this box is, it's just knowing um, how it goes together, where to put the adhesive and stuff like that, but it is a really simple construction. It's nothing too complicated like sliding bits um, into slots or anything like that, it is just literally um, glue tabs and stuff. It's just knowing how to curve it nicely to get it to, to look good as well. Um, yeah, I folded that one the wrong way there. And you can see actually with the um, Texture Craft Perfect you don't have to get a bone folder out to do all of the creasing. It's quite nice and easy to do that. So we want to take this piece off here. We're going to sort of lightly curve these and I've already stuck those heart gems on. When I did the first one that you will have seen in the up close video, um, obviously I didn't know where I wanted gems to go to begin with um, so obviously I stuck them on afterwards so you can definitely stick them on before or after you have put everything together which is good so we're just gonna do exactly the same thing I'm literally doing exactly the same thing as we did for that we just haven't stuck them all to a hexagon first we're just taking them as individual panels and I think the easiest way to do it is to leave this top tab and bottom tab until the end we're just gonna do all of the curved tabs first and we're making sure we go round in the right order and the way to check it is to hold this up against the actual top and we know that they're going to line up together. You don't have to line them up, you can definitely do them the opposite way but if I had stuck this yellow one um, to the other side of this red one they would have been the wrong way round um, and you wouldn't have been able to line it up if you wanted to. So that's why I thought I'd warn you. I did manage by some fluke to do it the right way round the first time and I hadn't even thought about that. Um, but I thought I would mention it just so that you know um, to sort of look out for that if you're doing a specific kind of colour order of panels and you want them to match up with the top and the bottom of the balloon. So there's the next one. Then we can do the blue one. And when we're lining this first one up, you're looking at this horizontal score line that's on both of them and you want to get those to match and then you can just press the tab from underneath to get that first one to join and then you can just start um, curving the sides down and pressing the little tab from underneath and then as you get to the bottom you should have those two horizontal score lines matching up again.
okay then we've got the last panel to add and then we've got to close up the um the last two sides as well Okay, so we've now got all of that. And again, if you're making this into a gift box, you can add your anti-static powder on there to stop the rest of the adhesive being sticky if you have done this method of sticking it together. And we're just going to take the liner off the last side and then we can stick the last one together. And press those glue tabs. So we've now got the actual base of the balloon and we want to stick these last couple of tabs together so we're just going to pull that off and then we're lining up the cut line with the score line and this is technically making the top of your gift box the top edge of the gift box because that's the lid of the gift box One more on that bit so that's the top edge of the actual gift box and then we need to do the same around this bottom collar piece as well Sorry, I keep going out of camera, <laughs> holding it towards myself. Oh. One more. Okay, and then we can stick that one together. So, if you were making the actual box it's intended to make, you would take this and you would now place the basket inside the lip of the bottom of that balloon and you would stick those two together and this would be the bottom of your box. So the actual box goes into the basket at the bottom as well. You could definitely stuff that with tissue if you then wanted to put like chocolates or something in this top portion and you didn't want to have to fill it all the way down to the bottom because it's quite a, a decent sized box. It's pretty large actually. From bottom of the basket to top of the... Um, the rainbow piece it's just over six inches so it's a pretty decent sized kind of box and then once those two are stuck together the idea then is that this is the lid piece and the lid will just fit straight over the top and it kind of comes downwards slightly and in the instructions it will tell you how to uh, you pick two opposite sides and you use four magnets one um, on each side of the top piece and then one on each side of the interior piece here and you actually use a magnetic closure to get the two pieces to stick together and I will um, have shown you that in my up close video when I looked at the other gift box that I created as well but for this one, I wanted to do something different and I wanted to stick these two together so the balloon is a whole piece itself and then the basket is going to hang below the balloon and we're going to attach it with um, some strings so that it's going to hang below the balloon. So we obviously need to make um, these two pieces be stuck together. So how I'm going to do that, I think is I'm going to use a little bit of 3D foam so I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to cut sort of square shapes and I'm going to stick them inside 
these little curvature bits here of the top piece and we're just going to stick a big square of foam tape on all of those sides and then I'm just going to remove the backing off of all of those and then I'm going to if you wanted to actually at this stage because we're doing the basket hanging below this you could do the same magnetic closure on this top piece but create your own bottom piece so that this would become a gift box as well obviously you would then need to have something um, decently strong enough to hold the balloon up and support whatever gift you put inside here but you could definitely do that if you wanted to as well but I want to do it like this for this one and I'm just going to slide the lid on and I think some of those foam pads already started to stick so do we think that's kind of even all the way around oh it's a bit further down on this side oh, about even there okay I'm looking at this part of the pattern so when I push this side down, this curvature comes roughly to there on each side. So now we can firmly press those um, foam pads into, tape, into place. Um, and this hole's not very big to get your hand in there. So you can use your glide folder or card creaser or whatever to press from the inside as well if you want to, to help you stick those together. Obviously you can stick these two pieces together whichever way you want if you are going to do um, just a decorative hot air balloon but that's how I decided to stick it together and it's a similar way to the way I stick the um, or stuck the bottom of de the decanter together as well. So that is our actual balloon for our hot air balloon and then we have our little basket as well. Um, on my uh, main one that I created that you will have seen in my up close video I also cut out lots of these pieces here and I actually put these going across here and then at the joins where the two of these met I stuck a little another little heart gem so you can definitely decorate as well but you can do this part at any stage and for that decoration I did it in a weird way because I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted these curvatures to fall on here so I did actually end up putting all six of them together and making like a curved edged hexagonal kind of a shape and then when I put it on the actual um, hot air balloon these bits kind of pushed upwards and left that little flat disc there which is then why I decided to stick a gem on the top of all of them but you can decorate them in whatever way you like you get loads of other um, different bits and pieces that you can use as decoration as well you don't have to just stick to um, it being plain like this or just using these kind of bits you've got stamps that go with them as well you've got little bunting and all sorts of different bits and pieces that you could use to decorate this I'm just going to keep it really plain just because um, I haven't quite decided exactly how I want to finish it off yet but this is the basis of it now and we just need to decide how we're going to attach the basket so I think I am just going to go with two um, strings and now I want to think which two sides of my whoops it's very easy to drop that hot air balloon now I've got to think which two sides of my hot air balloon do I want the strings to come from I quite like seeing the the yellow the green and the blue together so I might hang it maybe let's go blue to red We'll go the blue and the red sides we're going to put the holes in. I've got one of these little small um, hole punches but if you haven't you can just use your um, craft pick to make a hole in there as well and I'm hoping this will work. Yeah it should do this way around. I'm going to make a little hole in the centre of that little tab there and then another one over here. So we've got a little hole on either side and then we also want to make two little holes on two opposite sides of our basket as well okay so we've got all of our little holes then and I think 
if I was just doing this for me and not on a video, I think I might use invisible thread so it kind of looks like the basket is just hanging there. But so that you can see it on the video, I'm going to um, use some of this thin kind of twine. I can always cut this off and change it to invisible thread later on if I want to. Um, and now I've got to decide, do I run the thread all the way through and up and round? Or do I do two separate pieces and try and get them the same length? I think I'm going to go up and round because then if it's not quite level you've got the kind of loop of thread so you can make it more level so I think I'm going to do it that way so I'm going to take this fine twine this is finer than a baker's twine it's kind of just like a naturally sort of twine um, it's, it's yeah thinner than string but thicker than thread but anything that you have will do for this kind of thing and then once I've gone through the basket I want to go through one side of the balloon and then I want to tie the knot so it's hidden inside the balloon. So I'm then going to cut some excess off of here and thread that through the other side of the balloon. So we've now got the two ends of the thread are inside the balloon. And then hopefully when that hangs you will be able to adjust it. And I want to get the sort of height where I want it to be. I probably want there to be about a couple of inches of thread here so this little bit is about a couple of inches I'm going for or about five centimeters and then once I've got that kind of decided on I'm taking those two ends and I'm tying them I'm gonna do like a double or triple knot just to make sure it's nice and secure Okay, and then we can cut that off, and then when we pull the basket back down, it's going to be hanging below the hot air balloon, and because we did it on a string, you're not going to risk getting one, because um, we did it on a loop, sorry, you're not going to risk getting one of them longer than the other, you can just move it, because it's on um, a loop kind of idea you can just move it around and get it in the right position so that is how we've attached the basket to the bottom if you don't want to do it as a gift box and you want to do it as um, maybe like decoration for a kid's bedroom or something maybe they've just started learning about hot air balloons and stuff and you could have that hanging and I was thinking for hanging it um, in some of Tonic's die sets, mostly when you get a three-dimensional little gift box that's on the smaller side, you end up getting um, a little die in them that looks, or cut something that looks like this, and then this is just a score line here. And if you get one of those, oh you can't really see it, um, it kind of looks like that and then this is a score line here. It basically cuts a circle and like a hanging tab. We've had numerous of them in different tonic die sets, so you might have had one along the way. If you cut that into an extra hexagon, then you can stick that hexagon on top and have that little tab poking up and put your twine through it. Or you could do something similar to how we attached this, but thread the string across, probably in the same direction going from red to blue, and then stick another one over the top, and then you could have the strings coming up at the top and you will have secured it in place. Or if you... Um, I mean, it it really does depend where you're going to hang it, and do you want to do you want it to have a loop on there, or do you want it to have two ends of threads that you could then tie in a bow to attach it to something? But um, you could also have poked a hole in this and done like um, an actual loop, and then done double, triple kind of knot inside to hold it in that hole as well. So there's lots of different ways of making it. Um, hang too. I haven't decided how I'm going to hang mine yet but yeah so I think that's a really sweet idea of just changing it a little bit and instead of having the um, basket stuck to the bottom of the hot air balloon we've just made it so it is hanging so it kind of looks more like a traditional hot air balloon with the basket hanging below as well. So I hope you enjoyed this um, construction video, actually creating a hanging basket for your hot air balloon. Um, and don't forget if you haven't already, you probably have already watched it, but if you haven't, uh, go and have a look at the up close video because I show you the, um, you know, the way or the version that has the basket attached to it. And I'll also show you the two different decanters that I have done as well. Um, and if you want to know how to put the decanter together and you can't figure it out, then there will be another construction video as well that will show how to put the decanter together. 
So I hope you enjoyed this construction video and I will see you again in the next one. Bye!